Live from Portland, Oregon, it's the 2015 NWSL Championship where history will be made in Providence Park. Will FC Kansas City be the first team to repeat? Or will the Seattle Reign be the first team to claim both the regular season shield and the crown? The NWSL Championship starts now. With the dust of this summer's World Cup settling, it's now time to battle it out for a different trophy. You'll see the fire in me. I light up everything and watch your whole world burn to the ground. You must be crazy out your mind. You won't ever make it out alive. Kansas City and Seattle will go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. It's the NWSL final on Fox Sports. Championship. Now let's take you up close and personal with Heather O'Reilly from Kansas City and Seattle's Hope Solo to see what their day is like on a championship. Hey guys, Heather O'Reilly here with FC Kansas City. We're just in the hotel lobby ready to get on the bus and go to the championship game. Feeling pretty good. Thank you, A-Rod. Hi, Cheney. Give us a wave. Whoa, Coach Blacko. Let it go. Nice outfit. <laughs> Twinsies. All right, you guys, we'll see you there. Wish us luck. This is a video. Good morning, everybody. Here I am on game day, 8 in the morning, and this is part of my routine. First thing I do, I'm from Seattle. I love my coffee. It's not just me. Here I am at Public Domain Coffee across the street from our hotel in downtown Portland, and you're going to find 8 a.m. the rest of my teammates in here as well. Oh, there's Megan Rapino. We got a couple of the coaches. Yeah, I think we're ready to play. We got our caffeine. I know the game is still another 12 hours away. Um, I'm excited. This is going to be an awesome match. Um, Kansas City FC, Seattle Rain FC. I really want to show the Portland fans what it's like to hoist the trophy here in their hometown. So coming out, Portland fans, see what it's like to have a trophy here on your field. And Seattle fans, tune in, drive on down. Everybody else, turn on Fox and Enjoy the match. I hope we put on a show for all of you. Take care, guys. Bye. I have no doubt they will put on a show. So glad to have you with us for this championship, along with Kendra D. St. Aubin. I'm Jen Hildreth. Julie Stewart-Binks will also join us from the sideline. And Hope said it. By all accounts, this should just be a fantastic match. The two best teams in the league, not many people will argue with that, and they play really high-quality soccer. They do. Everybody has said they play beautiful soccer. And you can see from both of those videos how relaxed are these two teams, how much fun do they have, and I think that's a huge key to the success. Of course, Kansas City, the reigning champs, but Seattle with the supporter shield, so it should be a great matchup. I know my heart beats racing a little bit. You wonder what these players are like as they get set to take the field. Yes, both teams were here last year, but now there they are getting ready to head out. FC Kansas City, Seattle Reign taking the field for the NWSL Championship. Please welcome the Portland Air National Guard to present tonight's colors. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, please join us in a moment of silence for the victims and all those affected by today's tragedy at Umpqua Community College in Roseburg.
And now, ladies and gentlemen, please rise and remove your hats for the singing of our national anthem of the United States, performed tonight by Kira Smith. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the pale. O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket cried aloud, the bombs bursting, and I gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star-spangled man yet wave? <laughs> the hand of the free and the hurt. told you this is a rematch and you can understand why Seattle comes in here looking for a little revenge especially when you look at some of the numbers they put up in the final last year. If you look at the possession and of course you look at Seattle Reign with 14 shots to SC Kansas City's five who would you think won this game you would think it was the home team Seattle Reign but it wasn't Kansas City opportunity opportunistic they took advantage of some mistakes. 2-1 winners for Kansas City last year. Who's going to hoist that trophy in 2015? We're going to have the kickoff coming up for you next is the 2015 NWSL Final on FS1. You can feel the energy rising, the anticipation for this one. We're just a few minutes away from kickoff, and just a few moments ago, there's a little extra motivation out there for 2014 championship game. MVP Lauren Holiday, she caught up with Julie Stewart-Banks. Lauren, it's the NWSL final, but it's also your final club game. You told us yesterday that you expected to feel like it would hit you before the game, kind of like the World Cup final. How does it feel right now? I'm really excited to play. I I feel just overwhelmed with emotion right now, and really I just want to enjoy myself. I want to go out there and have fun and have fun playing with my teammates for the last time, and uh, obviously we hope to win this. Right, and you're going up against Seattle, a team that you guys beat last year. They have somewhat of a chip on their shoulder, a little bit of revenge factor. How do you beat them and defend your title today? I think today is all about us. If we focus on our game, if we focus on just knocking the ball and doing what we do best and keeping possession, I think that um, that's going to give us the best chance to win this game. And right now that's all we're focused on is ourselves and going out there and playing the way that we know how to play. Thanks, Lauren. Enjoy those final 90 minutes. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you, Julie. There is a lineup. Holiday, one of four U.S. national team players for FC Kansas City. This team lining up the same way they did for their semifinal win over Chicago. Meanwhile, for Seattle, four players represented in the best 11. That's the most in the league, including three-time honoree Jess Fishlock. That midfield is something to be reckoned with. For Seattle, should be a fantastic matchup. There is Lauren Holiday, MVP in this match a year ago. FC Kansas City wearing the white tops, blue shorts, moving from left to right on your field. Seattle, well, you can't miss them. That bright yellow top, purple shorts. As the rain, as the regular season, Shield winners and champions will try to add that championship trophy to this season.
Middle turnover. Can Seattle and Kim Little move it forward? Keelan Winters loses it. Now Kansas City going the other way. Is Leanne Brown wearing number 13 now, formerly Leanne Robinson. As of a week ago, she got married right back for Kansas City. Kendra, give us a couple of things to look for in this match. Well, it was interesting going to training yesterday and talking to both of them. Want to impose their will on the opponent, but how about Kansas City? Do not lose Little. Speaking of Kim Little, you cannot lose track of where she is on the field at all times. And as for Seattle, they need to press high, win the ball high in the opponent's defensive third of the field. And if they can do that, they can turn around and get on the attack quickly. We have the two coaches who have owned the Coach of the Year awards in this league in its existence. Vlatko Andonovsky, 2013 NWSL Coach of the Year for Kansas City, team that's made the playoffs every year, the only team to do that. And Laura Harvey, now a two-time NWSL Coach of the Year after leading her team to just a fantastic season. 13 wins, four draws, three losses to take first place. Highest scoring team in the league by a pretty good margin. There was Megan Rapino. Well, you really, got, moment. you really got the feel from both of these teams, the amount of respect that they have for each other, the coaching staff. It trickles all the way down from the top because they understand this is a beautiful game that both of them play. They play very possession style. And it's really just about imposing your will and making mistakes and capitalizing on it. The opponent has to capitalize on those mistakes to get a win here today. There is Holiday. She said the play loves to move through her. Her teammates look for her. She tries to direct it. She tries to find Heather O'Reilly streaking down that sideline. O'Reilly uses her speed to get there. Stephanie Cox stopped her initially, but O'Reilly able to get the service into the box. Seattle looking for Merritt Mathias, the lone front runner in their 4 2 3 1 formation. And I think we kind of thought the first 10 minutes was going to be manic, but it really isn't. It really looks more possession oriented right through the middle of the field using the width well. Everybody looks so composed and patient in this game right from the get go, which doesn't always happen in the championship. And they've had two plus weeks to think about this match, get ready for it. Semifinals played at September 13th. Both coaches talked about how they managed the time, tried to give their players some time off. But both also realizing with the quality on these clubs, their players will be ready. Good turn for the rain, but Matthias couldn't get there. Julie is down on the sideline. Julie, what can you tell us from Seattle's side of things? Well, Jen, as we talked with Laura Harvey yesterday, she told us that they wanted to focus on what they could prevent in a game like this, what they can control, how they press, winning the ball high up the field, and limiting service, of course, to someone like Heather O'Reilly. Pretty good service right there on their end, but go ahead, Julie. And right now, she's been very vocal starting things off, wanting them to keep that high line, keep things tight, and keep that pressure on. Pressure of Seattle versus the possession of Kansas City, certainly something to watch for. Heather O'Reilly could not get past two defenders. Now Rapino. Long switch of the field, maybe a little too ambitious. Maybe a little ambitious, but Rapino cut back in and take a look for her teammates. Not a single player checking to the ball in the middle of the field. She didn't have a whole lot of options there besides trying to switch that field or maybe play it down the line for Matthias. There is Little. Kim Little, the NWSL MVP a year ago. Led the team in scoring again this year. Lays that ball on the ground. Becky Sauerbrunn opts to handle it herself. Sauerbrunn, the three-time NWSL Defender of the Year. Rapino immediately with two white jerseys surrounding her. Now Brown will have to try to defend her herself. Rapino gets past, ball in, but Barnhart is there.
Let's talk for a moment to Nicole Barnhart. What a fantastic season yet again. A quiet warrior, as her teammates call her. Led the league in shutouts all three years. O'Reilly looked to the sideline for a moment. So did not see that ball come back to her. We just saw Vlatko Andonovsky. I've got a question for you, Kendra, because he said to us a couple of times now, well, semifinal in here, he said, look, our goal was to make the playoffs. Anything else is a bonus. Do you believe that? Well, I the think players? it's, don't you think it's kind of a way not to put too much pressure on your team? And he knows what they're capable of. He's got such a tremendous squad and, of course, so much talent on that KC side. Seattle trying to make a run the other way. Little gets it back. Absolutely, I think there's a little tactics going on there. Whatever works. Well, he doesn't have to tell those players. They're going to be ready. Look at the competitiveness on that side, on, on both sides. And you don't have to fire them up. There's no motivating that needs to be done when it comes to a championship game or even coming into this season. Keelan Winters on the ball now. In the midfield will look up to Stephanie Cox, longtime U.S. national team defender, possibly playing in her last match. Read an article online that said this could be it for her. We know that Lauren Holiday will be retiring as this ball is played in. I wonder about the emotions of those two. Fishlock, what a turn. Blues really working a lot through Heather O'Reilly right now. She'll try to play back to Holiday. With the six U.S. players on the field between these two teams, you wonder which of those will have the bragging rights of having both won a World Cup and an NWSL title in the same year. Four U.S. players for Kansas City, two for Seattle, and Hope Solo and Megan Rapino. Holiday has seen a lot of the ball, but got it pretty deep in her own defensive half that time. Well, that's what Seattle said they were going to have to do. Force Holiday and, the, and those stars for Kansas City to check back and receive the ball in their own half. That makes their job defensively a much much easier. Yeah, what did Laura Harvey say? Look, we know Holiday's going to get the ball, but if she's getting it that much deeper in the field, that's a good thing for us. <laughs> FC Kansas City, the best defense in the league this season, just 20 goals allowed, nine shutouts. So had a shutout in the semifinals. Long a ball up ahead for O'Reilly, little off. And you can see the idea there from Tim Rack. That's coming all the way from the left wing position, trying to find her partner in crime, O'Reilly, on the right flank. So I like the idea. I like the through ball, trying to slice something through the middle. Amy Rodriguez attracts so much attention defensively when she's up high. She sucks that defender in, and it leaves a lot of space for Heather O'Reilly on this wing. As well she should. Amy Rodriguez with both goals in the championship a year ago. Holiday set her up for both of them, so Holiday was the MVP. A-Rod has just been lethal against this team. There's Beverly Yanez. Good work, but a little off the mark with Matthias. Those two trying to link up. Yanez gave her a thumbs up after the play. She did continue that run. Matthias was trying to do a little heel pass to her, a little Give and go option on top of the 18 yard box, but Giannis had made that run. Seattle certainly happy to have Beverly Giannis back in the lineup. Although she was pretty effective off the bench in the semifinal, and she came in in the 71st minute and scored on her first touch, game's first goal. Had been out with a hip strain. 
Seattle trying to get it up to Rapino. Brown touched it. Rapino saying it's a pass back. Has her hands in the air. Does she have a case? I think she does have a case. I mean, your keeper is clearly coming off of her line. You've got your back facing her and intentionally touching the ball towards your goalkeeper. That wasn't an accidental tap there with the foot. I can see Rapino's argument. I, I'm right there with you. I'm actually a little surprised Barnhart picked it up, knowing how, how, you know, how smart she is back there and how good she is with her feet, taking that chance that the referee may blow the whistle there. Let's see if we can get a, a better look at it. Here's that through ball, and you could see Rapino tried to come out wide. Now, there it looked like she tried to make a defensive play, and it ended up just going back to her goalkeeper. You probably could have gone either way on that call, like she was going to take a touch, and then Barnhart was already coming off her line and ends up picking it up. You know, really aggressive in these first few minutes. One of six Portland pilots for the Seattle Reign in this match. She said she loves to come back and play in Portland, even though there is a bit of natural rivalry there between Portland and Seattle. What did Coach Harvey say? I'm hoping the fans are hostile. You no, know, she wants to play in front of a hostile, exciting, vocal crowd. I heard him during lineups. You see on the graphic right there, all those six University of Portland players, the crowd went nuts when they were announcing. Now Kansas City with some nice work the other way. And for the first time, we see Hope Solo called into action. When how about that quick release by Amy Rodriguez? First, look at that nice little heel pass by Tim Rack, an overlapping run. She finds Laddish in the middle. Look at that, four, five, six passes. Not a single Seattle player touched the ball. And Rodriguez, quick two touches and still gets a shot on frame with a little bit of a deflection there. O'Reilly sizing up her options. Tries to beat Cox, finds Holiday in the box, but Fishlock tracking back defensively. And Solo knows every time A-Rod touches the ball, she's got to be aware. She said for some reason A-Rod has her number. She makes her a better goalkeeper training against her with the national team. And there's a perfect chance right there for A-Rod. She can dribble you up, she can shoot from far, she can take a quick two touches. See, she really came on strong at the end of the season. Now the first corner for Kansas City. Ball in the box, still in the air. Looks like Tim Rack would be the first to get there. Back to Holiday. Look at the space out here. She sends it right in the box. Hope Solo comes out and snags it out of the air. <laughs> a little testy with the national team teammates. But hey oh, as she's known, stay out of her way. Holiday with so much space on that right flag. So Hope Solo comes off her line with authority, catches it, does a little spin. It was like a Dancing with the Stars move or something back in her day. And Hangs nice onto the ball the whole time there. I like how you worked at it. Well, we heard from Seattle and what they'd like to see early as Kansas City moves forward here. Amy Rodriguez had it for a moment. Let's hear from Julie Stewart-Banks about what Vlako Andonovsky would like to see early. Well, Jen, yesterday he told us to listen to him yell for his team to watch Kim Little and to maintain composure, don't panic, especially for his back four, which he's been very vocal with today. Now charging is his team going forward. Oh. Rodriguez with a rocket, but why? And going back to Julie real quick, I mean, specifically, Vlako talked to us a little bit as we take a look at this replay. I mean, Amy Rodriguez picks out that upper 90, and she knows exactly where she's trying to go to that with that ball. But Blackwell told us it's not just about composure on the ball, it's off the ball. And speaking of Kim Little, we said, how are you going to defend? How are you going to keep track of her all the time? She's so tricky with her movements off the ball, and she just slips out of coverage. Chance for Seattle now. That's Matthias. A couple of really good partnerships to watch for both of these teams. You saw Holiday and Rodriguez for Kansas City a few moments ago, and then Kim Little and Jess Fishlock. Fishlock from Wales, Little from Scotland. Those two.
to, in the words of their coach, can be devastating to another team. There is little on the ball. She's going to send it right in. Matthias heads it away. Hoping perhaps for someone to be a little closer than Rapino was, but Rapino does eventually get to it. Well, now Rapino on the right flank. We've got Stephanie Cox on his left back position. So a little bit of movement right now with Seattle, maybe moving some players around, switching things up. These players will tell you there is a bit of a revenge factor because a lot of them, we spoke with Jess Fishlock in particular, said, you know what, we didn't really get it last year. So we were so proud to, to win the Shield. I mean, that's consistent play that's won you the Shield. She said, we didn't really get what it meant to come in and win a championship. We didn't really get it until we lost it. Now they know. Well, and to be honest, those foreign players are still trying to figure it out because where they come from, it is a matter of consistency. Who's the best over time? But in the United States, as we so often see, a rare turnover there by Cox coming out of the back. But it is about consistency over time and over the season, but also who can win in the big moments when it really counts in that final game. Now is Fishlock and Little working together. Now out to Rapino, who, as you noted, on that right wing. Oh, what a ball. Finds Little. Has it deflected and out for a corner. And there's another great example. How do you use, lose Kim Little? How do you lose one of the best players on the opposite team? Because of her movement, she makes a slicing run, gets behind that back line, Rapino. Nobody knows what Rapino's going to do. Is she going to cut it inside? Is she going to take a shot? Or is she going to send it down the line for a teammate? And that's what she did there. I think Vladko's yelling right about now. Absolutely. I bet both these coaches, as much as they like to say, hey, we let our team do their thing on the field, they are so passionate on the sidelines. Service in, directed right toward Barnhart. And Julie, you're down there. What do you say? Is, is some yelling going on? Yeah, as you're just saying, Jen, Blacko has been very vocal this entire first half. He's been wanting his back four to keep their shape for Leanne Brown to stay wide, and he wants them to be all be better on 1v1, closing the gaps, pressuring Seattle when they have possession, and being quicker on the counter. Great stuff. Thank you, Julie. Rapino seemingly everywhere was there for defensive purposes. She's still trying to help defend Brown as she cuts it in. Brown left-footed. Ouch. That was Slammed range. right into Winters. She's going to take another little breather here, but this is another dangerous opportunity for Kansas City. You've got an outside back that can get forward on the attack, cut it inside, and rip a shot. Somebody on Seattle has to step to that ball a little bit quicker. Give a lot of credit to Winters, too, because that was close range. She didn't have a lot of time to react, and you could tell she made sure to keep those arms down, keep herself small, not make herself bigger. As they say, it was what one of those things the referee looks for to potentially award a handball. Andy Laddish moving it forward for Kansas City out to O'Reilly. Make sure she's on side. Finds Holiday. Back to O'Reilly. Winters quickly closed that gap. Megan Rapino has Kim Little making a far side run. She finds her. There is Kim Little. Takes the shot. And the save by Barnhart. Look at Rapino. She must have looked up and saw Kim Little with no one within 20 yards of her except chasing from behind and thinking, this has got to be my lucky day. Kim Little once again finds a way to get herself open. And on the opposite side, you have Kansas City trying to get in on the attack. They love to get those numbers forward. Lucky for KC right there, Kim Little wasn't able to put that one away. And a good save by Barnhart, too, coming off her line, kind of cutting off that angle. You know there was a ton of pace on that ball. Looks like she'll get to this one first as well. But Kim Little just really emerging as 
one of the stars of this league over the last couple of years. She was huge for Arsenal and she played there, 93 goals, and now has really established herself as one of the best in this league. Matthias, number nine, looks like she's shifted back a little bit. We've seen Seattle play around with their formation some this season. Matthias, remember, started the match as the one in that 4-2-3-1 formation. There she is, touching the ball out wide, tries to get it back a little, makes her way in there. And you hear players sometimes look like they've got a string attached to that ball at their feet. That's what Little looks like, such quick little touches. And she has the ball at her feet. Seattle being patient here. We've got a real flat back line for Kansas City. They know when to drop off when a run comes through, but right now Seattle trying to pick their moments. And a turnover right there is an easy counter here if KC can get it out. Marquino. Breaks that up initially. Amy LaPelbit, Becky Sauerbrunn, the two stout center backs. The heart of this Kansas City defense. Rikino to Fishlock. Holds off Holiday and O'Reilly. dominance in the Defender of the Year Award by Becky Sauerbrunn. And we talked about a little bit that the players who are away some as Kansas City still going forward with the World Cup. Think about the respect that Sauerbrunn then has to come back. She's not here the whole season, and she still wins that award. Well, and I'm sure her performance while she was away in the World Cup and in the World Cup didn't hurt, hurt either. <laughs> Yanez, for some help in the midfield. Fishlock seeing something, but too far in front of Rapino. Well, and you can see Rapino right there gave a thumbs up. That's a good idea. It's bringing that ball over the top. Liam Brown has been moving forward quite a bit, so she's a little bit winded in that right back position. Hopefully Rapino can take advantage. Saturday, October 10th, North America's greatest soccer rivalry is renewed when the United States men's national team takes on Mexico in a high-stakes match with a berth in the Confederation Cup on the line. Live coverage from the Rose Bowl begins at 8 p.m. Eastern, only on FS1, and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Seattle bringing a little high pressure, results in the turnover. Fishlock tries to get it back in there. Rachel Corsi, Scottish International, plays it forward for Matthias. Another defender, Cox, left-footed service into the box. A lot of numbers up right now for Seattle. Rapino uncharacteristically loses the ball. Well, and you can see she wanted to take a little bit longer of a touch there, that last touch to get by the defender to serve it in, but maybe a bit too much. A bit heavy on that one, but right there, Seattle really putting the pressure on, not allowing Kansas City to get out cleanly with possession. Was really kind of saved by this goal kick here. Remember that graphic that we showed you before this match started last year in the championship, Seattle outshot Kansas City 14 to 5. Nicole Barnhart had to make seven saves. Hope Solo only made one, but in the end, the brilliance of the combination of two really good friends and roommates, Lauren Holiday and Amy Rodriguez, were enough to win it. It was Laddish working with O'Reilly, won the beat in Cox. O'Reilly tries a little stutter step and the whistle blows. 
Well, I think it's incidental contact, but you have to blow the whistle in that instance. Heather O'Reilly, such quick feet, quick on the ball. Just about to make a move there. Cox gets her right leg out just enough. And I think that's a good call by the official. I agree with you. I was a little unsure when I first saw it in live action, but that replay, I think you're absolutely right. Cox knew about the speed of O'Reilly, knew she was beaten. Now Lauren Holiday will take the free kick. Driven ball, headed away. Becca Moros plays it right back to Holiday. O'Reilly calling for it. She's going to send it in the box and the header just wide. That was Amy LaPelbet getting up there. We know how good she can be in the air and just misses. And another one of those players that probably doesn't get enough credit for her defensive duties, but she was still forward because of that corner kick. Holiday serves this ball in with her left foot, spinning towards the keeper. Had the defender beat there. Diving header by LaPelbet. It puts a lot of pressure on her defender, doesn't it? The way she puts that ball in. And now Seattle trying to put some pressure on through Matthias. Deflected, corner kick. Amy LaPelbet has played every minute of the season for FC Kansas City. True Warrior back there on that back line. A couple players for each team have played every minute of every game this season. I mean, they'll tell you it's a little bit of luck, but man, is that a lot of preparation and taking care of your body all the time. Right, Stephanie Cox with that great left foot is back to take this corner again. The last one went right into the hands of Nicole Barnhart. This one low driven. Seattle wanting another shot at it. Looks like they're gonna get it. Well, at the end of training yesterday, Seattle spent a very good portion of the practice working on corner kicks offensively and defensively. Coach Harvey said, look, we haven't seen the full squad for Kansas City and played against them since April. So both sides offensively and defensively working on some tactics here. Here it is, sent in. Keelan Winters got up and got to it, but sends it over the crossbar. Hope Solo had a blog on her website this week where she really went into some pretty good detail about every single one of her teammates and called Keelan Winters the unsung hero of this team. Winters, another one of those University of Portland alums, also former captain of the U-20 United States national team that won the World Cup in 2008. Find some space on the left side with Moros. Also looking for Tim Rack. Tim Rack, nice move in the box, sends it in. Barnes got to it initially, it falls to Amy Rodriguez. KC resets. Is it back to Jen Blizkowski? Now Laddish again. It's Leanne Brown who's come up. Saw her take a great shot earlier, and this time just gets shoulder off the ball by Rapino. Gives it right back. Sour run. Pushing up. You can hear the crowd here at Providence Park. Portland led the league this year Ooh. in attendance. Just fantastic oh, support. And a big collision right there. It's like everybody back to their feet. Kendall Fletcher was the last to get up for Seattle. Who's not quite out of danger yet. Rachel Corsi plays it back to Fletcher. Well, I think Fishlock was stepping over to double team on that play because she's seen what Timrak is capable of on that left flank. So much speed, loves to cut inside right there, right through the legs of Fitcher, Fletcher. And Fishlock comes in for the double team, and it's a collision between all three of them. And Timrak told us what she loves and what she's good at is her creativity. She doesn't like to be held down. She doesn't like strict rules. And Andonovsky allows her that creativity to cut inside, take players one-on-one, -on -one, and 
As long as she gets back to her spot and does her defensive thing, Andonovsky's okay with it. And Fishlock showed you what she thinks of that. Exactly. Having none of it. Yeah, keep cutting inside and you'll see a hard tackle waiting for you. Trying to find an opening in that Kansas City defense. It's been so hard for anybody to break down this season. Left footed ball in the box, but easily scooped up by Barnhart. Kendrick, if you're Seattle, let's see what Holiday does here. Anytime she's pushing forward, you want to be careful. But what does Seattle need to do to break up that Kansas City defense? Well, I think they just need to do more of the same. How many times have we seen every time they get the ball in the middle of the field, they are finding their width, whether it's right now we've got Fishlock spreading it out wide. Rapino on the other side, they are really using the width of the field. Fishlock gets it. Rapino tries to get a foot on it. Yanez still fighting for the ball for Seattle. Look at Fishlock. Do you see how passionate she is right there? And I'm taking a look at Coach Harvey because she's got about equally the same passion. But Fishlock makes that great run down the right flank, serves the ball right into the middle of the field. I think there was one yellow jersey in there that could have touched the ball, and she was frustrated by that. for Beverly Yanez. Nine goals, one assist in the regular season. Also tacked on another goal in the semifinals. We've seen flashes of it, some great combination plays, some give and goes. And all of a sudden, you'll see five, six passes strung together, and then it's that final pass that just seems to be off or just miss. Well, we knew this would be tight, both of these teams with 
so many quality players and playing so well. What a move by O'Reilly to give Brown some space. But good placement defensively by Seattle. It seems so many times we've seen that service blocked even at short range by the defender just stepping into the path of the ball. Well, and right there, I think Brown just a little too short-sighted. You had Tim Rack pretty open on that far post. Brown still battling, keeps it. O'Reilly now. Hope Solo thought about coming out for it, didn't. Try to let her defense handle this one, now they do. When you've got Holiday and you've got A-Rudd making a run up through the middle, and even O'Reilly was in on that last attack, you know somebody's got to be open on that far side. O'Reilly looking for Holiday. She has Rodriguez and Tim Mack in the middle. Again involved, Rapino showing some frustration and having a little conversation with the referee, Katarina Korleva. And Rapino coming back on the defense here. I'm not exactly sure what Rapino is really upset by there. Maybe she thought it was a cleats up tackle or somebody slid in funny, but. She was coming back pretty late. Wiskowski wins it back for Kansas City to Tim Rack. Looks like she's just pulled down by Winters. Not right in front of the referee. Doesn't look like there will be any additional penalties here. Well, this is a clear, easy call for the referee to make. Just kind of body slams her with the forearm. I rewatched the final from last year, and I saw a little bit of that as well a couple times. Keelan Winter is a very strong physical body in there when she needs to be, but you've got to be careful. This is a really dangerous opportunity, a good spot for Kansas City to take advantage of a dead ball situation. It was a physical matchup last year in 2014. A lot of whistles, but if you ask the players, they like to play. They like to have a physical game as long as it's clean. So Holiday. Has another great look at a free kick as Hope Solo sets her defense. There is the shot deflected and over. Holiday perhaps going for a handball. Well, it looked like Rapino. She had her arms on her chest, right, you know, close to her body, protecting herself. But as she jumped up in the wall with her arms on her chest, it, it did hit Ooh. her arms. But that's a tricky one because her arms are in the spot they're supposed to be, right? Covering well, your chest, protecting not your yourself. Elbow. But you're right, she did put her elbows away from her body a little bit as she jumped. Corner kick coming from Holiday. As Korleva will. Look at the smile. We're not doing anything in here. Clean things up in there, yeah. at least try to. Holiday, low ball, not her best. Hope Solo will try to quickly restart this one. Puts it just a little bit out of the reach of Fishlock, who stays down on the ground. The entire coaching staff looked like FCKC up after that Buzkowski. She did come in a little bit, cleats up. Look at the replay on this. Cleats up, catches that left knee. Now, in real time, I thought, hey, they both slid into that ball at the same time. They're both trying to get into it late. And you hope Fishlock is OK, but it did look like Buskowski came in a little bit direct and cleats up on that slide. Boy, the passion between those two players when they collide, no wonder it was a big one. Jess Fishlock, former captain, four-time player of the year for the Welsh national team. All three years a member of the best 11. And as you said, you just, you hope it's not too serious. We well, you know what Buzkowski's thinking. She's thinking if, if Fishlock gets to that ball, and touches it by me, she's got about 40 yards of wide open space to fast break in the opposite direction. Of course she's not trying to injure her. She's just trying to get to that ball first, and the only way she could do it was sliding. Unfortunately, she catches Fishlock. 
on that slide. Fishlock, Julie, such a key component of this Seattle team. Definitely, Jen, not just noticed here, but across this, the pond. I spoke with England's women's manager, Mark Sampson, today, who said he'd be watching this game. He said that Jess Fishlock and Kim Little are two of the best players he's ever seen. And if they didn't represent Wales or Scotland, respectively, they'd be on his England squad. Boy, that tells you something. That's excellent, Julie. Great to hear from Mark Sampson. Fishlock trying to walk this one off. She'll head to the sideline temporarily at least. And that is Amber Brooks warming up on the sideline for the rain. Still scoreless with under five minutes to play in the first half of this NWSL championship, along with Kendra D. St. Aubin and Julie Stewart Binks. I'm Jen Hildreth. Rematch of last year's final. FC Kansas City trying to make it two in a row. Seattle trying to claim that crown that has eluded them so far, despite really some record breaking seasons in this league. Matthias works to get the ball, but commits a foul in the process. But I think she's really, Matthias, really riding that back line there. A little bit too far that time. Tim Rack, Fishlock back on, as you see there, Tim Rack's going to send it in for Rodriguez. Barnes got to it first. Now back to Lattish. And you can see where Little came back to win that ball almost all the way on her 18-yard box. Plays it one touch to Fishlock, who turns it over, and Fishlock still walking with quite a bit of a limp in there. Yeah. Have to keep an eye on her as she tries to run this one off. Well, and at this point, she's probably just trying to at least get to the locker room where she can be reassessed without subbing out before that, right? I mean, one, it's also that time. that tricky part, though, once you go into halftime and you're sitting there and it can tighten up. Sure. Rapino did well to collect that ball cleanly. Still has it. And Giannis. Still not in sync. The Seattle attack that led the league in scoring this season. 43 goals in the regular season. Just hasn't been able to connect yet. Well, you love the idea of a possession-oriented team playing beautiful soccer, but at the same time, you've got to know when to pull the trigger up front. You know, Yanez with a beautiful through ball to Fishlock, but at the same time, if that defender's backing off Yanez, why not just take that shot yourself? Little. First touch let her down, but she gets back to it. Some of that pressure that Seattle likes to put on, and Fishlock clearly in pain. You could tell she had to just pull up immediately after she got rid of the ball. Well, I think that was a different one. I think she thinks you know, she feels like she got clipped in the foot or the ankle there by whoever was defending her. Maybe it was Timrat or Laddish, but moved by Yanez, but good help from Sauerbrunn. Coming up at halftime, we'll recap the NWSL season, have an interview with League Commissioner Jeff Plush, and show you highlights from the first half. A first half that, by the way, should this score stand, would be the first in NWSL history to go to the halftime break without a goal being scored. It was 1-0 in the previous two installments at halftime. Perhaps Heather O'Reilly and Amy Rodriguez looking to change that at that time. Two minutes of stoppage time added to this first half. What do you think, Kendra? 
Kansas City and the pelvic moving forward. We see some changes in the second half, perhaps. Not necessarily player-wise, but do you think tactically there might be some adjustments? I don't know that there will be adjustments, but both teams are going to go into the locker room and say, we need to finish your opportunities. The longer you let the opponents sit around, they are going to capitalize. And it, it sounds silly to say for both teams, but I think that's what they're capable of. And right now, I would think Seattle is feeling it a little bit more. The longer we sit around and we don't capitalize, Kansas City is going to come at us and counter. A mistake is going to be made in the back. Something is going to happen, and A-Rod is going to finish a chance, just like last year. Both teams said yesterday that they felt it was going to come down to something small, a little bit of brilliance, a little mistake. Small things become big things in right. a game like this when you have two teams that are so talented. And so aware of what the other team can do. This is the third time they face each other this season alone. Nifty bit of work between Rapino and Little. But now Kansas City going the other way. O'Reilly cuts it back inside. Finds Laddish. Back to O'Reilly. Nobody on that far post. Timrak is pinched way in. Now we see the run. Boros gets there. Really not much happening with that ball, though. So 0-0 zero, zero is the score as we head to the break, Kinder. We thought it would be tight and be close, and so far it certainly has been. Nobody breaking through yet. I thought it would be tight, and I thought it would be close, but I thought what if somebody would have gotten on the board. I thought we'd see a 1-1, one, one, a 2-2 two, two here at the halftime with the offensive firepower. Well, let's get it down to Julie Stewart-Binks with Seattle coach Laura Harvey. Laura, Seattle fending off some late pressure from KC in the first half. How did you feel your team did in the first 45? I think we're always a threat going forward. I just think that we're giving too much away transitionally, giving too much space in the midfield. So that's something we've got to work on at halftime. Are there any changes or adjustments we can expect to see maybe going forward to get that first goal? Not initially. I think we can keep going the way we are when we've got the ball. I just think that we need to be a little bit better when we don't have it. Thanks so much. No problem. And Julie, movement off the ball. Another thing that we heard players talk about yesterday is one of the things that could open up this game. So far, though, 0-0 zero, zero is the scoreline, but we've got plenty coming up from the half. NWSL Commissioner Jeff Plush will join Julie, plus much more coming up right after this. Zero, 0 the score at the half here from Portland. FC Kansas City and Seattle Reign. Nobody's been able to find the back of the net yet as they are in search of the 2015 NWSL Championship Trophy. Hello, everybody. Jen Hildreth, Kendra D. St. Aubin, happy to have you with us. And Kendra, we talked about the fact that there are six players from the best 11 on the field tonight, but really it was quite a year for the league as a whole. Well, and I think that's what's so important. We had all these players internationally going to the World Cup, and then we had this tremendous amount of talent that stayed right here and carried the league through that entire month-long break. As we take a look at the rosters here, look at the amount of players alone just on Seattle and KC. A lot of names that you wouldn't expect as far as the fact that we talked so much about the national team lapel, but of course, Jess Fishlock, Kim Little, Beverly Yanez, all these players that have really carried the load during that break. It is a nice mixture between some of the national team players and those that were here for the entire season. You look at the year-end awards as well. What a year for Crystal Dunn as she's trying to get back into that national team mix and getting both the MVP and Golden Boot Awards. We talked about Sauerbrunn owning that defender title. Yeah, no big surprise, Laura Harvey, once again the coach of the year, and she's earned it. Well, let's get it down now to Julie Stewart-Binks, who's standing by with NWSL Commissioner Jeff Plush. Thank you so much, Jen. Jeff, big news for NWSL as you just inked an extension, a four-year extension with Nike. Tell me, just how important is this for the league? Well, look, it's so important. They're our, uh, our founding partner. They're, they bring so much to the table, just what we do with each of the nine clubs, with our youth, with our development academy strategies. Um, so we couldn't ask for a better partner to be here in Portland for the final and in their headquarter hometown. It's, uh, it's been a lot of fun for us, a great, a great uh, last 24, 48 hours. 
Now, NWSL is preparing to enter into its fourth year as a league, outliving any other league, women's league, in the United States. What has made it so successful? Well, I think we, we've got a different structure this time. The, the support we get from the United States Soccer Federation, along with our federation partners from Canada and Mexico, just makes for a different platform. And the sport has grown so much over the last half dozen years as well. So we've got a, the right uh, setup, the right ownership, We've got growth opportunities. We've got great sponsors like Nike. We've got broadcast partners like Fox. It's uh, just the right recipe and the right time. Well, thank you so much. Appreciate your time. Yeah, anytime. Thank you. Yeah, it will be great to see this league go to year four. You think that would be just a big boost of confidence? As like Julie said, no other women's pro league in the U.S. has been able to do it. And again, carrying that momentum from the World Cup and, of course, everybody really latching on to this league and doing a great job with the sponsorships. Well, we already know who won the World Cup championship. This one still up for grabs. We'll show you some highlights when we come back to Portland. We are scoreless at the half here in Portland between FC Kansas City and Seattle Reign FC. These two teams meeting for the second year in a row, vying for the NWSL Championship. Let's take a look back at some of the highlights from the first half. And Holiday, last year's MVP, serving in a pretty nice one right there. Well, nobody stepped to pressure the ball too quickly there, giving Holiday just enough time to serve in a nice ball, bending in towards the keeper, and then a nice tackle there by Fishlock. She wins it in her defensive third of the field. She was kind of all over the place defensively, but a chance there for A-Rod. You cannot give her the slightest bit of space. And another ball in from Holiday. Hope Solo having to come off of her line. Retrieve that one and look at the double team. There's Fishlock again with a little bit of his shoulder, but look at all three players getting up. Such a physical game. Piskowski coming into Fishlock. A little bit of a cleats up tackle on the knee. We knew we were going to see a physical matchup, though. Much the same as last year. These two teams so excited to get on the field. They've had a two-week break, really, of any competition as a team. You see the stats there, and I think Kendra, you know, fairly even. Kansas City with more shots. But really, that will be a big storyline for the second half as to whether Fishlock continues in this game. Big, big part of what the Seattle team has done this season as the rain ran away with the league shield. But they have yet to hoist that championship trophy. FC Kansas City did it last year. We'll have the second half coming up after this. Just moments away from the second half kick. Let's get it down to Julie Stewart-Bings who had a chance to talk with Vlatko Andonovsky from Kansas City. There is Vlatko Andonovsky. We'll get that report from Julie shortly. Fishlock still in the game for Seattle. That's a good sign if you're a Rain fan. Showed you at halftime. Jess Fishlock involved in a couple of big collisions in the first half. And it's always hard at halftime because, yes, you can get reevaluated, maybe get a little bit of a treatment. But we also know it's easy to tighten up your muscles, whatever it is you want to try to keep moving if you're able to, instead of just sitting there letting things tighten up. Seattle coming in as the Shield winners, finishing first in the regular season. And both of these teams played really well down the stretch of the season. Seattle on a nine-match unbeaten streak coming into this match. That includes eight wins in that stretch, and it's a seven-game unbeaten stretch for Kansas City. A little mistouch by Lauren Barnes. She knows it. Product out of UCLA, member of the best 11, one of those we talked about in the first half who has played every minute for her team this season. Tim Rack with a tricky little back heel touch, and I'm hearing that we have Julie Stewart Biggs. Julie, you down there now? Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry about that, Jen. Uh, <laughs> Flacco told me at the half that he's happy with how his team played. He felt they were dangerous, they controlled the pace of that first half, and that they were good with the dead balls. He just knows it's going to take one opportunity to go in, and that's going to be the one that wins the game. 
Well said. That's what you've been saying, Kendra, that it's it's so tight between these two teams that it really could be that one chance to finish your opportunity that is the difference. And Kansas City has had a couple of nice set pieces. I was going to say, that's twice now that right here in front of us on that sideline, the Seattle players thought the ball had gone out of bounds. The first time it did not get called, that time it did. See, so both teams have found ways to come back and win when tied. I shouldn't say come back, but to win in the second half when needed. Seattle's done it a bit more. And the word from the sideline, no doubt from our intrepid reporter, Julie Stewart Binks, is that Jess Fishlock did get cleated, but she's fine. Maybe has a little souvenir to show from the championship. I think there's another one she'd rather get, though. There's Leanne Brown, formerly Robinson, making that run, getting the cross in. Zimrak missed it. Now Laddish has it. Rodriguez. Rapino, deft touch to find Winters. There's Kim Little. Keep your eyes on both number eights in this match. Kim Little for Seattle, Amy Rodriguez for Kansas City. A-Rod, as we mentioned, has just been lethal, both in the postseason where she has five goals <laughs> in three career postseason games in the NWSL. And she also has five goals in her career against Seattle. Well, and what did Hope say to us? Why is Amy Rodriguez so tricky? She has a floppy ankle. <laughs> I wrote that down When she too. said that, I, I kind of was like, what? I don't, I don't understand what that means. But when she explained <laughs> it, it was perfect. You don't know, is she gonna chip you? Or is she going to rock it one right at you and pick a corner? She has this floppy ankle when she takes these shots, and you don't know what she's going to do. Hey, fellas, in the truck, can we, can we work that into uh, A-Rod's bio, please? Yeah, I think that would be ankle. a nice touch. She of the floppy ankle. And, I, and she meant it as a compliment. Yes, you know, yeah, absolutely. Normally, you know, you hear a soccer term that you've got a floppy ankle when you're taking a <laughs> shot. It's not usually a real positive thing. But for A-Rod, it absolutely is the way she does that. Little showing off some of her own skills, but off the mark on the final ball. It's Kendall Fletcher, number 13, who had it, lost it. Holiday to Tim Rack. Marka Tim Rack, former Florida Gator. Switches the field nicely for O'Reilly. O'Reilly keeps it low on the ground gobbled up by Solo. And that's a perfect example right there of what they are trying to do offensively. Get out quick, keep the ball, and they switch the fields once again. The wings are so wide open. Really, for both of these teams throughout this match, they are trying to use the entire field and use that space. Turnover in the middle of the field. Rodriguez has it. She had two goals in last year's final. Still has it. Now the shot, but right at Solo. So intense. Amy Rodriguez has a look on her face. Look at three defenders. Nobody knows what she's going to do with the ball. She has these great little touches, keeps it in front of her, doesn't get enough on that shot. So good in tight spaces. Matthias can't beat two defenders, but does keep possession for the rain. Five goals in four matches down the stretch when it gets into the postseason for A-Rod. A turn by Matthias, sends it in, headed. Yanez got up there to it, but put it right toward Barnhart.
Aquino. Tripped up, whistle blown, free kick coming for the rain. Look at Rapino, just so good on the ball. Two little quick touches, and maybe she didn't get touched too much there for the foul, but she's a smart player. She knows her opportunities. She touched it inside, cut it back on top of the box. Goes down, and another dangerous dead ball here for Seattle. Let's see if they can take advantage of this opportunity straight on. As a goalkeeper, Jen, is this easier or more difficult? Well, that wall, for one thing, is right in front of you. You have to wonder, look at the two players there, too, Kendra. You know the bend that Rapino can put on the ball, but it's Little who takes it, takes it under deflection. This time, though, it's going to be a goal kick. And you can tell right away she's not happy about it, and she takes another kick there, but launches that one over the crossbar. She got turned around by Rapino that time. This time, Rapino is the one whistled for the infraction. No surprise to see FC Kansas City pitching a shutout so far. They were better than anyone in the league. Just that throughout the season. Nine shutouts, 10 if you include the semifinal victory over Chicago. And these two teams, by the way, split their two regular season meetings, each of them winning at home. Rapino turning, finds Yanez, but the flag is up. Just a half a step offside, I think, on Yanez on that one. Again, Seattle riding that back line and trying to take advantage of that opportunity. MLS Soccer Sunday, sponsored by Audi, returns this week with a doubleheader here on FS1 starting at 7 p.m. Eastern as the Colorado Rapids try to spoil the playoff hopes of Real Salt Lake, followed by a showdown of elite Western Conference rivals as the Seattle Sounders battle the LA Galaxy. Look who's, look who's in the stands. We've got John Strong with his wife, Nicole. You know the man loves soccer. He calls an awful lot of it in the MLS. I didn't know we were going to be graced with the president's celebrity in the stands. Hey, absolutely. This is a place to be tonight. I mean, this is such a fantastic soccer town. Portland not getting to see their home team Thorns play in this championship, but still plenty of fans on hand here for what they knew would be a great matchup. Boskowski plays it out to Brown. She'll just keep going forward. Ball takes what could be a dangerous bounce. Another one by Fishlock. An awkward touch there. It'll be a throw in for Kansas City. both of these teams about that playing in Portland it's not a home game technically for either of you how do you feel about that they were excited about the opportunity to play in Portland knowing the passionate soccer fans in this city Rapino Matthias finally gets to it just gonna keep that ball going across to Cox I read an article that said Stephanie Cox, one of five moms in this league, is a big foul there right in front of our referee on Little. Another one of those in this match, Amy Rodriguez. does. Working for some space. Rachel Corsi, center back up there. And you can see her shielding that ball, kind of almost boxing out. And the offensive third of the field, Rapino flipped that ball into the 18-yard box. And Corsi trying to make a turn and get on the end of it. 
Corsi, one of the few players on these two teams who was not a part of this matchup a year ago. It was just her first year in the NWSL. And really, the personnel for both teams, fairly similar. Final club match. Had her jersey retired for Kansas City earlier this season. Will be done internationally after the victory tour for the United States. You wonder how her emotions are doing at this moment. Right now, I'm sure she's just pretty locked in. She seemed like it yesterday. Well, and after that last possession, she had a nice ball one over the top there. But then right away, Kansas City giving the ball away, possessing the ball easily on that right side of the field. And a turnover. You could see Vladko Andonovsky just turn with his head down, kind of rubbing his eyes back to his bench. Cannot have turnovers when you're not under a lot of pressure. Nice ball by Flesher for Rapino. Two defenders right there with her. She splits him, trying to get it to Little. had a goal and an assist in the semifinal win over Washington. Little snuck that ball in there too. But right at the pelvic. Barnes playing a little more direct that time for Matthias. The pelvic missed touch early but recovered. See the rain numbers just closing in in that corner, but now Brown gets it out of there. Of course, she sends it right to Fishlock. Little looks to Fletcher. Fletcher with the cross. Ooh, that one was close. I don't think Fletcher was trying to put that one on frame there, but couldn't quite get her hips around it far enough to pull it back out for a cross inside the box. Instead, it kind of rides along the top of the crossbar here. She makes a great run up that right flank. Her teammate finds her through that seam and plays that ball in, but just couldn't pull it out far enough. Fletcher, an NCAA champion with North Carolina. was a center back last year, a member of the best 11, and then Fletcher moved outside to right back, so it allowed her to get up into the attack that time, and named to the second 11. Well, and both these teams have backs that can attack, but at the same time, you've got so many defensive responsibilities with this Kansas City offense coming at you and vice versa. It's hard to pick your moments to go forward. Sauerbrunn getting in on the attack. She doesn't go very, forward very often. I guess if nobody's going to stop her, she'll keep it going. Now Timrak. Oh, dangerous touch off the foot of Fishlock. It's Moros. Dangerous with Fishlock there because we, as we've seen in other matchups, when you're defending and running back towards your own goal, and a ball gets played in the cross, that's when own goals happen. So it's tough to get back behind the ball, face away, so you don't have something like that happen to you. Neither team has really emerged to put their stamp on this yet. Some high pressure from Amy Rodriguez, trying to force the turnover from that Seattle back line. Rapino. And Little working. Little with Buskowski right on her. Like she might have been holding her arm a little bit. No whistle. Now Holiday coming very deep in the field to collect the ball.
Tim Rapp. Both teams talked about movement off the ball being important. There was a run on the far side from Brown. Brown keeps it. Gladish has it. And it blocked by Fishlock. Waiting for some help. Littles loves to find her. You know, wanting it back, gets it now for Matthias. She'll take the shot. too much and she saw an opening there and just ripped one off that left post. Arpino with five goals, five assists, and ten matches played during the regular season. She looks hungry out there to me. I mean, really, you know everybody's intense and ready. It's a championship match, but you just sense a different level with her. Well, everyone wants to possess. Everyone wants to play that beautiful game of soccer where you possess, but you have to possess with a purpose. Take advantage of those opportunities and take some shots. Could this be one here for Kim Little? That touch too far out in front of her. Holiday. I mean, Rapina was standing still when she took that hit. It wasn't like she took a step and ran onto it. It was basically dead at her feet, standing there, and she just struck that ball. But it was almost like she saw that shot in her mind. She was waiting for that ball to come back to her, too. She was ready. Nobody was around her defensively. And nobody stepped when she got it. Nope. She doesn't need much of a window. She doesn't. Many defenders have become aware, both internationally and at the club level. Look at this. Great passing by Seattle. Again, combination play in small spaces. That ball was rolling back to where it's like that drill you do in warm-ups where you pass it back and someone hits it one time as they're rolling at you. And what a strike. Nothing Barnhart could do but kind of watch it go by her. Right glove. Fletcher tries to get it to Little, 5-3. Little did well to get up as high as she could, but couldn't quite win the ball. With Buzkowski on her back, that doesn't help either. No. Another one of those unsung heroes for one of these teams. Playing every minute of every game, really hoping on the fourth third middle for Kansas City from a defensive standpoint. Well, let's just go ahead. They're our only player to have started all 66 games of the NWSL regular season. That's the Iron Woman, Jen Buskowski. Rapino. Rapino came in with some authority on that tackle. Becca Moros, former Duke Blue Devil will take the throw in to Buskowski. Outside touch, back to Holiday. Pelvin. Now Brown. O'Reilly. Chippy little touch in there, but handled by Fletcher. Fishlock just all over. I'd have to take a look at this replay. We know Holiday, a very strong physical player, but she can shield that well, ball well and keep possession. Fishlock trying to take it away from her deep in her own defensive third of the field. And Holiday gets whistled. Come over with a quick restart. 
keep her from having a little tone it down oh. conversation. And just unfortunate, she could not get out of the way that time with Fishlock advancing the ball. That's tough right there. I mean, you've got Timrak trying to dribble out of trouble. They're out of pressure at midfield. The Moros, her left back, came so up tight, close on her. That would have been her outlet. That would have been her pass to get out of out of pressure, but the defender was too close to her. Yeah, good point. Patented holiday turn. Laddish. Brown working hard to give that overlapping run, but O'Reilly's gonna opt to go back toward the center. Rodriguez is there. Corsi got to it first. Now Winters, second effort. Laddish off the mark. U.S. Women's National Team coach Jill Ellis is in attendance watching this match. And I understand Julie Stewart-Binks has a little more on some of the things she's looking for out there. Julie? Well, Jen, I had a chance to speak with Jill yesterday. She told me she's here to support the league, of course, but to constantly evaluate talent. In particular, she told me she's keeping a very close eye on Heather O'Reilly, someone who was a reserve player for her at the World Cup but who's really shone in NWSL this year. Now, as for Lauren Holiday retiring, she said she's been one of the most versatile players that she's seen, but her retirement opens up a starting spot for someone, and that could be anyone. They could even be here tonight. For sure. Thank you, Julie. That's one of the challenges for Jill Ellis on this victory tour is honoring those players like Holiday who are retiring, and then also make sure you've got things ironed out for Olympics coming up. There are a couple players out there that might have uh, been catching Jill Ellis's eye. We heard about her keeping an eye on O'Reilly. Anybody else? I think there's a few players easily out here that should at least be given a look. For sure, not just players to replace Lauren Holiday, but other opportunities. I mean, Tim Rack has speed. She's dynamic on the outside. Of course, we talked about Buskowski in the middle, holding down the board, durable, strong, fit. Keelan Winters has gotten some looks in the past. So I always think it's great to bring in new players, even if you're close to an Olympic year, because it creates a competitive environment as well. Bring in a new look, challenge some current players in their positions, and, and keep it fresh. And LaPelvit, she has U.S. national team experience as well. But it's kind of a challenge, too, for Jill Ellis. We talk about her using the victory to her a little bit also. Tim Rack. Trying to get in line. Does she get taken she down? No. Very clearly the no sign from Play our on, referee. Though. Play on. Do not stop. Amy Rodriguez right over there to pick the ball up. That ball over the end line. Let's take another look, Kendra. I thought on, on real time here, it looked like a little bit of a clumsy play there by Fletcher, maybe taking her, oh, uh, clearly, yeah. clearly clips her ankles from behind as she's trying to recover right there. How is that not a foul uh, inside the box? I'm with you. I think that absolutely should have been a penalty kick for FC Kansas City. Fletcher was trying to recover defensively, clearly gets her feet tangled inside Tim Rax who had beaten her with some speed. She's the most foul player in the league, and you can see why with that speed. And that was not one of those where you're fouled outside the box and you fall inside of it. Right, she no. was inside the box, had her defender beat, and okay. that should have been a penalty kick. And by the way, that ball was passed back to Hope Solo. She was over getting a drink of water. Luckily, no danger. She gets back out there in time. Wow. You know, it's interesting. Kansas City has not made a penalty kick all season. Now, it's a different story for Seattle. They've had four chances from the penalty spot, all taken by Kim Little. She made three of them. But I, I think absolutely a missed chance for one on that play for Kansas City. Have our first substitution of the match. Seattle is going to bring in the Danish international, Katrine Vai. Adds some pace up there to that front line, doesn't she? She does just a different look. I mean, Matthias has 
pace, she has strength, but I think a good set of fresh legs in there, something a little bit more dynamic up top, just change it up. Keep Kansas City honest on defense. Vi started the semifinal match against Washington. Kansas City scored all three of its goals in the semifinal in the first half. Different story for Seattle. The Rain didn't get their first goal until the 71st minute. Got two goals from substitutions. The third from this lady right here, Rapino. A little. Yanez. Winters will pick it up. Fletcher. Ball in the box. Had a couple of options there, both Vi and Rapino, and nobody got to it. Well, just unlucky Vi goes right over the top of her head. Rapino couldn't even really see that ball coming. Hit her right in the chest. Quick counter the other way for Kansas City. Holiday switches the field for Timrak. Again, that's Fletcher again stepping right in front of Tim Rack and having a hard time getting back up this time. I mean, that's a tough one because once again, Fletcher, as she's trying to recover defensively, but Tim Rack has so much speed. She steps in front, so she does her job there, but then she kind of slows down and puts her arms out. Well, and that's the second time in the last few minutes now that Fletcher has been beat in the box. And she's, I don't know whether it's positioning or just like you said, the speed of a player like Tim Rack, but you wonder if that may have Laura Harvey looking at her bench. Well, maybe not at her bench, but maybe swapping sides or making a change somehow defensively. But we also know Timrak likes to cut inside. She can switch to the other side. So even if you make a defensive change on one side of the field, Timrak is the type of player that will find an opportunity somewhere else and find someone to beat. And I'm not sure what happened to Fletcher on this play. That time she got back in position. She got back in front of Timrak, tried to slow her down. bit tender as she's on the ground being tended to. Laura Harvey in the ear of Fishlock. Still scoreless in this championship match as Kendall Fletcher is just now crawling off the field. We'll take another look at the play that got her there. And you can see Fletcher trying to force her, keep her inside, keep her to the end line, use that end line as an extra defender. And as she stepped in front and shielded the ball and went to the ground. And it looks like Harvey is going to use her second substitution. Ellie Reed getting set to check into the match. Little taken down. That could bring out a yellow card and does. On the three-time NWSL Defender of the Year, Becky Sauerbrunn. And she didn't look happy about the call either. She comes up right here. Rapino flicks it on. It's tough to tell from that angle, but it almost looked like the two players both turned to go to the ball that was played over the head of both players got tangled up, and Sauerbrunn ends up with the yellow. Well, and a tactical foul in the eyes of a referee, hence the yellow card. And here comes Ellie Reed, who has her work cut out for her defensively. Another Portland pilot on the field now for Seattle. Rapino bends it into the box. Little has two defenders to beat. Cannot get that corner kick she's working for. 
Final 15 minutes will take a look that FC Kansas City has scored seven times in these final 15 minutes, given up three goals. So they've found a way to score late. And Seattle, six goals, but they have been outscored, interesting, by one in the final 15 minutes. Missed touch by Reed, who just came into the match. Can O'Reilly make her pace? Left it into the Kansas City. Look at Lauren Holiday. Gets her head on a swivel, takes a look at the deflection. She finds the width of the field. Heather O'Reilly on the near side. She finds Amy Rodriguez completely unmarked, really, in the middle of the field. I mean, you had three to settle the Seattle defenders right nearby. Touch tight, but not tight enough for Amy Rodriguez. You've got to put a body on her in the middle of the field. Don't allow her to get a clean header that close, and she beats Solo. She has just been incredible. Her sixth career goal in the playoffs. Her sixth career goal against Seattle. And she just wrong-footed Hope Solo, too. Solo was going the other way and could not recover. Wasn't a ton of pace on that header, but it was placed where it needed to be. It started in the middle of Holiday. She got the ball and had too much time. She was able to take two touches, take a look right, left, where do I want to play this ball? Finds her national team teammate, Heather O'Reilly, on the left wing. She has a lot of time, serves it in. And Amy Rodriguez, once again, coming up in the clutch. Kino do this on the other end. That ball is not going to help her out. Amy Rodriguez in the 78th minute, breaking through in this match. It's like another 45 minutes. Three Seattle jerseys right there, but not close enough. Except and I'm to you can see the that. concern on the face of Amy Rodriguez for good reason. That is Lauren Holiday down on the ground. Holiday playing in her final club match. And it looks like Erica Timrak is coming over to Vlatko Andonovsky to fill him in on whatever she may have been seeing or hearing out there on the field. And he's quickly getting more trainers out to Holiday. See, get a look at how this happens. There she is on the top of the box, right inside the 18. Oh, gosh. I mean, no collision or anything. No she just contact, goes down. No nothing. She's just running back to her own goal, defending. Wide open, nobody around her. And you could tell by her teammates' reaction immediately saying, we need to get someone out here. Sauerbrunn went right over to it. And of course, her best friend, Amy Rodriguez, was there as well. So a sobering moment for everybody here in Portland. It's Holiday back on her feet, but nearly shaken. on holiday. We'll get back to Julie when we can. Crowd chanting Lauren Holiday. But right now, FC Kansas City, a goal up and a man down with Holiday off the field. Ellie 
Reed can't hang on to it. Fishlock will try to provide some pressure. And somehow the goal scorer, Amy Rodriguez, comes away with it now, gets it back from Tim Rack. And look who's back. Holiday came back on the field at full speed right there. So fantastic to see her. And now, Julie Storbinks, what can you tell us about Lauren Holiday? I just spoke with the trainer for Casey who said that it was exhaustion, but there was a lot of commotion over here on the sideline, and they did order an ambulance because Lauren has a heart condition, and that was just for precautionary reasons. But she looks to be fine on the field right now. Thanks so much, Julie. Certainly hope that is the case. You figure she's back out there, so it's a good sign. That ball over the top, but out of bounds. Seattle made an incredible push at the end of last year's final. Kendra, you and I were just talking about it before the game tonight. They came through. Megan Rapino found a goal in the 86th minute. Now you will see. The intensity ramp up a bit for the rain here. Well, I'm sure it's a little bit of deja vu for the rain, knowing that they need, again, late game heroics. They did have it a bit in last year's final, but too little too late. Sometimes you can't wait till that final five, seven, ten minutes to have that sense of urgency, but Seattle's been putting the pressure on all night long, just not taking advantage of some of their opportunities. And certainly a different game when you consider it's a one-goal game now. It was a two-goal lead for FC Kansas City then. Amy Rodriguez scored in the 22nd and 56th minute of the championship match in 2014. It was the 78th minute tonight. Still with the ball. That was Rapino. And she'll earn her team a corner. We'll see if Megan Rapino can help pull her team into this match, low driven ball on the corner. Not much of a chance. I don't think that's where she wanted to serve that ball. There's definitely a time and a place for set plays to serve it to that near post, low and driven, but the way she was waving her teammates in, the marking backs to get into the box, you would assume to get a ball in the air, and instead she serves it low and driven to that near post. So now, just about five minutes plus stoppage time left on the clock for Seattle as they try to find Rapino. She has Ellie Reed making a run. Yanez couldn't get there. The regular season champion in the NWSL has yet to win the championship. Seattle was in that position a year ago, trying to change that now as they won the regular season title again. Little sends it into the box. Ball sent right back into Fishlock. Winters can't get there. Hope Solo way out of her goal, the back line of defense at center field for Seattle. Hope Solo, practically. That's by. Now Rapino, but right at Bornhart. What a look. This ball comes bouncing in. Look at Rapino, able to get a clean shot off the way that was bouncing in, skipping off the turf. And she still finds a way to get something on it, but hits it right at Barnhart. Golden opportunity, though, for Seattle. We will continue to press. Sauerbrunn to Rodriguez. That's good defensive positioning right there. By Corsi in the back. 
Perpino. And Vlatko Andonovsky is going to make a substitution now. That is Shea Groom, the rookie out of Texas A&M coming in. And Julie, you've got something on Shea? Yeah, I've been listening to the coaches yelling at her. They said, play smart, intelligently, absolutely no fouls, and go get us two. All right. So that's the advice. To the player wrote, voted Rookie of, of the Year by her teammates on her team, Shea Groom. And now, another corner kick, and it will be Stephanie Cox to come over and take it. You can see clearly everybody on Seattle getting inside the 18-yard box. Hope Solo halfway to the opponent's goal. Cox's left-footed service, far post. Punched out of danger by Barnhart. That hand seemed to come out of nowhere and get that ball. Well, I think it was Rachel Corsi was on that back post. Barnhart timing her jump perfectly. It's just enough of a fingertip on it. She did have a teammate in front of her as well, but good job by Barnhart to get up. And then here is that last chance by Megan Rapino. Had to break out of that because Seattle was charging forward again. Didn't want you to miss any action. It did get broken up. Tell you what, it's tough to work a replay right now because Seattle really pressing, wanting that championship that has eluded them. to Rapino, bending toward the back post, and Yana is just waiting on it, but recollected. It was like she thought someone was behind her to, to get it. She kind of watched it come in, took a glance over her shoulder, thinking a teammate, maybe Little, was behind her, but she wasn't, and that ball falls easily to Kansas City in the box. Seattle has not lost a match since July 18th. They only lost three all season, but in danger of losing the biggest one right now. Coach Harvey said it wouldn't be a failure if they didn't win the final, but it sure would be a disappointment, and she did not want that feeling again like last season. She hasn't even watched the whole final from last year. Would like to erase that memory right now. And they're sending Hope Solo into the box as well. Why not? Hey, we saw Michelle Betos do it for Portland earlier this season. She scored on a header on a set piece. Pepino's ball going toward the back post. And five minutes of stoppage time added. That's pretty good amount if you are Seattle. Coach Harvey, just a big smile on her face, I bet. She saw that five go up on the board. That is a lot of time for Seattle to take advantage of an opportunity here. Well, she smiled and at the same time said, hey, Hope, can you go back at least <laughs> kind of toward the goal a little bit? Little. No whistle. The referee was right there. Says play on. FC Kansas City trying to hold on to this lead. The offside flag goes up. In the short history of the NWSL, no team has ever gone back to back as champions. Although it is somewhat fitting, should FC Kansas City pull off that feat, the only team to make it to the playoffs all three years. And you can see the conversation right there, Mandy Laddish sprinting off the field and everyone's telling her, hey, slow down here. <laughs> We're trying to take some time off the clock, slow down. Yell Averbush, former North Carolina Tar Heel in her first year with FC Kansas City. Also with some national team experience. Mm -hmm. Her job right now, 
hold it down. Take care of the ball. Seattle trying to make something happen through Reed into the middle of the field toward Fishlock. Winters. Ellie Reed. Harvey's pointing to the far side. Katrine Vi wide open on that left flank. She is waving her arms in the air, wanting that ball, wanting a switch field. It's been on this near side for quite some time. And let's hear the applause for Amy Rodriguez. What an incredible presence she has been in the postseason. And Sarah Hagen, or Apple, as her teammates call her, has come in. This throw is going to go back to oh. Hope Solo. Really a tough ball for her to handle. She was a field player back in her college days. Does well to get it out. Vi could not get it around. the defense of LaPel, but... Under two minutes to play, roughly. Solo again. See her own sweeper keeper on that ball. Looked like a handball. Play on. You can hear both coaches getting picked up on the field microphone. Kansas City can't believe that that ball went to Seattle. Corsi opts to play it back through Hope Solo, let her move the ball to the other side of the field. Tried to switch it back over toward Rapino. Rapino had the best chance of the game for Seattle. Plays this one for Little. Can she get to it first? <laughs> Becky Sauerbrunn showing why she is one of the most highly regarded defenders in the world. Does her job that time. That clock, the enemy for the rain right now. Do they have one chance left? That ball could spell the end of this one. Perhaps a chance for Little if she can get there. She doesn't. Referee looks at her watch, and that's it. FC Kansas City has defended their title. in that embrace. The final club match for Lauren Holiday, and she sent out a winner because of her best friend with her arms around her right there, Amy Rodriguez, who scored the game's only goal. Only fitting it came from Holiday to Heather O'Reilly to Amy Rodriguez for that goal, the game-winning goal. Those three have spent a lot of time playing together through the years in the national team system. Well, coming up after the break, it's Fox Sports Live with Jay and Dan. Then we're coming back here to recap the game. We'll bring you the award ceremony live right here on FS1. And the party is on. Hope you enjoyed the National Women's Soccer League final. You're watching Fox Sports Live. I'm Dan Esker. Coming up, highlights from the Thursday nighter between the Ravens and Steelers. But first, we're going back to Portland for the trophy presentation.
and our good friends Jen Kindra and Julie Stewart. -Bay. This crowd of over 13,000 applauding the match they just saw. FC Kansas City defending their 2014 NWSL title with a 1-0 victory over Seattle Reign FC. What do you think, partner? About what we expected in terms of quality, intensity? Quality, intensity, possession, respect for the opponent. I guess I thought I was going to see a few more goals, but we also are talking about the two stingiest defenses in the league. Applause for the winning team, of course, but of course, Lauren Holiday and her retirement. What an emotional game for her. Her team talked about trying to win it for her, but Seattle, as you expected, put up a great fight in this one as well. And once again, the combination play, we had Holiday to O'Reilly, finding Amy Rodriguez. You cannot give her that much space in the middle of the field, right there inside the box on the six yard line. And she finishes that with that phenomenal header. 78th minute of the game, Amy Rodriguez. Who else would break through but A-Rod? does it again for her team in the playoffs. She had two goals in the championship last year and the game winner this year. Final stats, you see this time it was FC Kansas City out shooting Seattle. At a very physical match, we have the fouls, eight to two corner kick Seattle rain ahead on that one, but just a great effort by both sides. One of those games so tough to have a loser in this matchup. We enjoy talking to the coaches, enjoyed covering the teams, and it's tough to see a loser in this one, but FCKC comes up big. And they're getting set down on the field, getting ready to award that trophy. You see already the championship shirt on Lauren Holiday, and we will send it down to the ceremony. Julie Stewart Binks is down. Ladies here. and gentlemen, please turn your attention to midfield for tonight's championship ceremony. Number zero, Caitlin Rowland. Number two, Shea Groom. Number three, Rebecca Moros. Number five, Elizabeth Bogus. Number six, Jen Buzkowski. Number seven, Megan Lisenby. Number eight, Amy Rodriguez. Number nine, Heather O'Reilly. Number 10, Casey Clark. Number 11, Francis Silva. Number 12, Lauren Holiday. Number 13, Leanne Brown. Number 14, Yale Eisenbach. Number 15, Erica Timrak. Number 17, Amy LaPellet. Number 18, Nicole Barnhart. Number 22, Sarah Hagen. Number 23, Carolyn Castor. Number 25, Mandy Laddish. Team Captain, Becky Sauerbrew. And head coach Vladko Andonovsky. Please direct your attention to midfield and Fox Sports 1, Julie Stewart Banks for the official presentation of the 2015 National Women's Soccer League Championship Trophy. Thank you so much, Kevin. I have Lauren Holiday here, your final game for your club, Kansas City defends their title, and your best friend, Amy Rodriguez, scores the game-winning goal. Is this how you imagined the end would be? It doesn't get any better than this. First off, thank you to these fans. You guys were incredible tonight. This is the way women's soccer should be celebrated. But hats off to my team. Um, Heather O'Reilly with a great cross, Amy Rodriguez with an unbelievable finish, and this is such a blessing just to play on this team, so I'm so proud of them club and country in one year, winning the World Cup, winning the NWSL title. How has this year been to finish it all off? I couldn't have wrote a better script. I mean, this is absolutely incredible to win uh, for club and country is a dream come true. So where can we see Lauren Holiday next? What's the next move for you? 
maybe on vacation. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks. And now I'd like to introduce the NWSL Commissioner, Jeff Plush, to award the 2015 Championship Trophy. Jeff. Thank you, Julie. To uh, echo Lord's comments, thank you to Portland for this fantastic, tremendous evening for our league. Thank you to all the Thorns, Providence Park employees, Merritt Paulson, Mike Golub, uh, for a tremendous experience on behalf of our ownership. Uh, we couldn't be more proud. Uh, certainly quickly to Seattle Rain on another wonderful season. Congrats on that. But it's my pleasure to hand this trophy over to Captain Becky Sauerbrunn as the champions. Congratulations, Becky, defending the championship title here tonight. It wasn't easy. It was tough near the end. Take me through how your team was able to win tonight. I mean, I think we stayed really disciplined on defense for 90 minutes. They've got a lot of firepower up top. Seattle, I mean, their attacking game is just so strong. So we were under it for quite a bit, especially the last 20 minutes or so. So kudos to them for always giving us a really tough match. But I thought we just came out strong, stayed disciplined, and I think that made the difference in the end. Two titles in two years, three playoff appearances. Why is this club so special? I don't know. I think, I think our coaching staff and our ownership has just done a great job of putting together a really strong squad and we have a really clear philosophy of how we want to play the game. And I think tonight you saw two teams that really like to play soccer the way it's supposed to be played. Thanks so much. Congratulations, Becky. Thank you very much. I'd now like to introduce the 2015 NWSL champion, FC Kansas City. its championship. What a tremendous season going back to back. Amy Rodriguez once again just inserting that dagger into the hearts of the Seattle Reign. And FC Kansas City, the champions of the NWSL. It's been our pleasure to bring you this championship game for our producer Dan Hyatt, director Rutz Lathrop, my partner Kendra D. St. Ovid and Julie Stewart Banks. We go to Jay and Dan in the studio.